G'day guys, welcome to the New Syrup Podcast. I'm your host Isaac aka Shrek. Today we are headed down to the South Island of New Zealand to chat with a couple of Grom Spiro kids, Max and Ben, who are 9 and 11 years old respectively, along with their dad Don. Uh, there's a ton of awesome info for taking kids spearing in this interview and I hope to do a few more of these in the future. But um, if you're here for the first time, this is the New Story Podcast where I interview spearfishing experts, authorities and characters from around the world and share these interviews for free wherever you happen to listen to a podcast. And... Um, Jeepers, today's episode, what a treat. Uh, Max and Ben are a pair of characters. They they share a whole lot about their experiences. It's a it's a faster interview than usual, but uh, I had a ton just chatting with these boys, and I'm not going to give you a big, long, fluffy intro today. Let's get straight into it and listen to Max, Ben, and Don share their adventures. This episode of the Noob Spirit Podcast is brought to you by spearfishing.com.au. They've been on board for more than 100 episodes, and I'd love for you to shop at spearfishing.com.au. They have a price beat guarantee, hassle free returns, flat shipping rates across Australia, and you can save 20 bucks. For every purchase over $200, if you use the code Noob Sparrow, you save $20. Thanks for supporting the Noob Sparrow Podcast and shopping with spearfishing.com.au. Partners of the New Spear Podcast, Neptonics.com. Neptonics offers the best spearfishing gear, spear guns, carbon fins, spear gun parts, and packages at the lowest prices. Go to Neptonics.com, use the code NOOB10 to save 10% of anything at Neptonics.com. N O O B 1 0. Boom! Welcome to the Noob Sparrow Podcast. Today I'm joined by three legends. Uh, introduce yourselves, men. Yep. Um, uh, Don McDonald, um, um, the dad of these two. I'm Max. Uh, I'm Ben. Cool. How old are you, boys? I'm 10. Yeah, and I'm 12. And you fellas have been bitten pretty hard by the old spearfishing, eh? You got the bug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they sort of uh, started about sort of last year so you know when they were sort of uh, nine and nine and eleven and uh into it jeepers and uh and oh, you wouldn't have had any issues starting at all it's a really simple sport eh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, well, there's, there's a fair bit to it boys i'd imagine you you guys would have had your fair your fair share of issues yeah just yeah. getting used to being into the water mainly yeah yeah, yeah. Like um, your dad said, you sort of hung off from the first few times and were just kind of asking him questions the whole time, and then um, and then you saw him shoot something, and then you were just you wanted to have a go yourself. Is that kind of what happened? Yeah, we were a bit, you know, we wanted to know a bit more. Yeah. And when we saw Dad do it, we we wanted a piece of it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, what do you remember about that first experience? Was the water cold? Was it clean? Oh, it was cold and clear. Okay. Yeah, because we didn't have our witty um, wetsuits on. We just had some cheap, ripped wetsuits. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Dad. <laughs> she was, uh, yeah, she was pretty. She was a pretty rough start with the uh, with the wetsuits and the old fins that the rubber had deteriorated, and I had to actually put some uh, insulation tape around to hold them on. That's and, the way. Uh, but uh, they sort of started off pretty, pretty greeners, and uh, but it sort of turned around the other way now. Mm. Uh, after a year, it's, yeah, uh, it's it's funny. Like, um, so at, at eleven and nine, you guys got in the water and you had some some hand me down broken old gear, but it, despite being cold, you guys really enjoyed yourselves by the sounds of it. Yeah, it was just it was heaps of fun, even though we were cold and miserable. Where, where was this dive you guys went, and what kind of stuff did you see? Um, it was at the Denian Harbour. Oh, no, the, the first time was at oh. Kaikoura. It was at, oh, yeah, um, Kaikoura. In the, yeah, the north north side of Kaikoura, just by the Seal Connolly there. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yep, all right. Yeah. Cool, and yep. the water was cold, but it was clean. What kind of stuff did you see? Um, just some banded wrasses. That's all I saw. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And did did they, was there crayfish around? Because it's a, it's a pretty famous area for the old crays. Um, yeah, we, we saw a, a few little little ones. I'm, I'm, I think I grabbed a little one, and they got to hold it, and uh, yeah. and um, things like kinner and yeah. you know mm-hmm. starfish. And what else did you see? Um, 
coral. Yeah. Coral weed stuff from weeds and seaweed. Yeah. But uh, lots of little blennies and things like that, you know. Mm. There are lots of shells. Mm. Mm. Come out with arm loads of shells. Oh, cool. <clears throat> I took my son out, um, just holding on to my back a little bit like what uh, your dad did with you fellas, and he kept spitting his snorkel out and losing his fins and stuff. Did you guys do any of that? Oh, well, I, I, have, well, I had used a snorkel before I went diving, but I did get a few mouthfuls of seawater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that, what was that like? It didn't make you seasick or anything? Oh, Wee bit of gagging. <laughs> you know what's good for that, eh? You got to get snakes. Make sure your dad's got a bag of snakes, lollies in the in the car on the way back home. <laughs> yeah. 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 First time I did it, I kept opening my mouth in the water. Okay. Yeah. Well, just a reflex. I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. What about what what about finning and stuff? Then and holding your breath was any of that difficult, or are you just slowly? How long is it taken to start doing that um, a bit better? Uh, well, on our second time diving, I st- we started going down slowly. Nice. The, um, yeah, the first couple of times, there wasn't a lot of finning. It was mainly me sort of dragging them around by the elbow. Um, but uh, then a, a few other times, you know, there'd be something to the side, like a shell that they wanted to see, and they'd sort of, you can feel them pulling along and, and, and starting to fit in themselves. And um, the um, and once we just sort of developed from there, once Ben started, uh, we got them into some free diving fins, mm. um, longer fins. Um, it was just a total, total transformation. Hmm. Um, all of a sudden, he was, you know, duck diving and and getting down and, and into it. Hmm. So, yeah, cool. My son's name's Ben too, so it's pr- pretty different. Um, so when when you started, when you got these big fins and you started finning down, um, did you have to start equalising then? Uh, well, I didn't know much about it then, and then well, Dad started taking me, well, talking about it and teaching us to do it properly. We did a fair bit in the pool, a fair bit in the dive pool and stuff like that. So you guys have done a bit of free dive training in the pool. Did that Did that help? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Just give, give you a bit of confidence and, and you can work on your technique without worrying about fish and stuff, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it made a, made a big difference doing a pool session, you know, a couple of days before we went out. Mm. Um and uh, it's it's funny, it's a real sort of follow by example sort of sport, really. I mean, uh, they'd be sort of hanging on to the side for the first few times, at the, even in the dive pool, and I'd sort of swim down the bottom and uh, muck around, and and uh, it, it didn't take long, and I turned around, and and there they were sitting on the bottom with me. So <laughs> um, it's the same with the uh, out in the out in the sea, you know, if um. Uh, you know, I, I saw one of the questions about somebody asking about how to get them into deeper water. Mm. Um, uh, the uh, it's just a gradual acclimatization, really. You know, we're swimming over shallow stuff and then drift out to a bit of deeper stuff where they where they can't stand up, mm. and um, eventually you can sort of just leave them for a minute, let go their elbow, dive down a little bit, and and stuff like that, and they feel safe for that short amount of time yeah and, yeah uh, and then then it doesn't take long and um and you know you're just following them and they're away i mean a lot of spearfishing is just about being comfortable isn't it and sort of and, and feeling safe and confident in the water and i guess um boys has it been awesome sort of learning with your dad and being able to have him there to rely on and just sort of just to help build while you're building your confidence and stuff yeah it helps a lot <laughs> Yeah, 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 awesome. And you, and Don, it sounds like you've pretty much have just really got back into it with the boys, eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it's it's interesting because it's a um, uh, it, it's you know, spearing is one of those sports where, um, especially with kids, you need to be there. You need to be participating. It's not like you know you're sitting on a sideline and uh, cheering on and saying, "Oh yeah, good luck." Hmm. Um, you actually have to be 
physically in there and um, and stuff like that. And uh, it's uh, yeah, it's been really enjoyable. I mean, I was out of the water for nearly twenty years, mm-hmm. and um, and now it's uh, just yeah can't keep out of it and, and, and neither can these guys so you know, might as well just go with it they yeah, sweet you know it's a, it's a great place to be so alright cool catches boys uh, Max we'll start with you what's one of the coolest things you've caught in the ocean so far um probably uh there's this weird like monk fishy thing yeah it's a um, we think it was a uh, what they call a black cod over here or a um um, and uh, that was that was uh, quite a big, big fish. And, yeah. Uh, but and apparently they're not bad eating. But we we went a hundred percent sure, so we you know had a bit of a try, and it seemed all right. But you know that was a that was a pretty good fish. Yeah. Hey Shrek here. Sorry, I missed you. Leave me a message. Hey Shrek, uh, looks like I missed you, man. I just wanted to leave a quick message. Just wanted to tell you that uh, Noob Spiro podcast is just, it's kicking goals, man. Um, just keeping the stoke alive for us here, and uh, especially during this Rona season, uh, you you guys are just killing it. Uh, Noob Spiro podcast for life, man. I absolutely love it. But uh, I hope your listeners uh, are also aware of the Spiro Magazine, what's going on over here at HQ. We've got, uh, as usual, we've got you know the listener stories picks and adventures all the time at spearingmagazine.com head up to spearingmagazine.com in the store section there's they can get a subscription to the magazine they can buy the online digital subscription there's apparel there all the good stuff uh just want to say great job man and spearing magazine jeremy gamble out one of the hard things about spearing i reckon is um kind of not being 100% sure on all the species, you know, and trying to figure it out. And sometimes you look at a fish book and you go, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, okay, I know those ones. And then, but seeing them underwater, they, they're a bit different. than the than the, And they move different. The pictures don't show you how a fish moves and stuff. So there's a fair bit to figure out with identifying the species that you're targeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they've got the uh, um, one of my my brother works for a uh, he's a South Island rep for um, doing seafood for a food company over here. So he sort of set them up with a couple of big posters of all the fish species in oh, New nice. Zealand, and that's been uh, that's been a big help. We've got one of those on their wall and stuff like that. They can pretty much pick out stuff pretty well now. Yeah, nice. You know, um, so yeah, pretty. Pretty good for that. They're discovering weird and unusual species there all the time. I was chatting with a couple of marine biologists from over over in NZ a little while ago. I don't know if you guys listen to that one. But um, they were telling me about some of the stuff. There's, there's more species than people realise, I think. Yeah, well, there uh, seems to be a lot of sort of newer stuff, that, especially around the South Island, that we didn't uh, get before. Um, so I'm not sure. I think there's a bit of a warm patch on the East Coast there. Mm. Sort of turned up over the last year. Scientists are a bit baffled as to where that came from, but I actually think it might be pulling a, pulling some different species of fish in. Mm-hmm. Cool. What about you, Ben? Proudest fish to date or, or catch? You might have got an octopus or a big cray or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, probably my big blue mokey. Yeah. Uh, have I seen a photo of that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got yeah, that, that, was photo. A, that was a bloody monster. Yeah. How'd you catch that? What what happened there? Um. Well, I just dived down about. That's about five or six meters. Five or that? six meters, and I sat. Well, I lay down on the sand, and there's a wee school of mochi went by, and I saw that big one. I was like, "You're mine now." Nailed him. Nice. So, where'd, yeah. you, where'd you shoot him? Uh just behind the gills, wasn't yeah, it? Just behind yeah. the gills. Oh, nice. Central body mass, eh? Not, not, not like, not, not a gut shot like I'm famous for. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Good job, man. And um, boys, you like? Um, I saw your dad sent me a photo of you guys practicing icky jimmying ahead, uh, uh, some some pumpkin. Um, Learning, learning how to stab fish in the head and stuff. What, what did you, what did you learn there? Can you explain that to me? Um, yeah, 
because we found icking fish quite difficult, so we were like, oh, we'll just practice on some pumpkins. <laughs> Love it. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think they found that, you know, at the first couple of times when they were having a go with fish, it's um, uh, around that head. It's, it's quite a solid area, really, especially on yeah. some of the big fish, like Ben's, Ben's Mokey. And, mm. um, yeah, they were sort of uh, – Massaging them with the uh, spike for a couple of times, but now they're now they're into it. And, so, and what's the go, fishing. boys? What's the, what's the rule? How do you how do you work out where to stab a fish in the head to icky it? Um, on top, sort of in between the eyes, sort of on top. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I always think of it like a triangle. Like you got the two eyes. They're, they're the two um, sort of bottom parts, and then you make a a third point of the triangle back back a bit and then that's where I always stab in um, there's other spots you can do as well though some guys like to sort of slip it in a maybe a centimetre or two centimetres back from the eye and then into the brain from there have you guys tried that one? No mm. but I imagine that would be probably a wee bit easier Okay what are you using are you using an icky spike or have you got a dive knife? Uh, an icky spike Okay cool yep. All right. yep. I've got a dive knife yeah, one of the um, one of the things about doing it out of the water is uh, um, I've we sort of thought it, it might save a few uh, sore hands if they if they get it wrong in the, uh, in the you know in the water. Mm. So I was out um, recently. I was out recently with a trip, and a guy's um, you know I got a big mackerel, a big Spanish mackerel. Um, and um, he's sort of holding it in the gills and he's gone for his dive knife and the fish has wriggled around, it's more than 20 kilo and he's actually stabbed himself in the leg. So knife safety is not something that stops. I mean, even when you're a really experienced spiro, some mistakes and stuff still happen. It's definitely a, a big area of safety. Um, so you guys have got the icky spike to sort of reduce some of the sharp edges. Is that sort of right? Uh, yeah, pretty sure. Cool. And... Um, what 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 other sort of what are the other sort of hazards or risks that you guys have have learned with um, spearfishing that you got to pay attention to? Um, probably staying down too long. Sometimes I've di- like dive down, and I've just looked around. There's butterfish everywhere, and I've been so focused on trying to get it, I've forgotten about you, and I'm just trying gasping for it on the way up. <laughs> yep. Yep. To, um, when you do realise, like when you start to get contractions and stuff, and you do, do you, do you feel panicked when you when you really need to breathe? How, how do you how do you deal with that? Um. Well, I guess you could say I kick a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's a hard one. And now free divers at the highest levels that hold their breath for, you know, five, six, seven plus minutes, they they're still doing the same things. They're learning how to manage that that urge to breathe because it gets stronger and stronger and um trying to stay relaxed with it's a difficult thing, I reckon. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Cool. What about spear guns, boys? Are you getting more confident with them? Um what's what what tell us about your spear gun? What are you using? What are you using, Max? I've got a, uh I think it's an Omar one. Yeah, it's a Omar um, seventy-five. It is. Yeah. Okay, tell me about your gun. How do you, how does it work? Um, you load the rubbers. And you yep. pull the trigger. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, how many rubbers have you got? Um, I think three. Three. Yeah. Three three ten mils. Yep. Um, bends on that. Um, and uh. On, on Ben's one, he's he's using twelve mil rubbers now. Okay, nice. But, um, uh, the good thing about the 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 ten mil ones is they're pretty easy. You have don't have any trouble pulling them back there. Mm. And yeah, and that's one of the big things. When when I was talking with Darren Shields, he said, you know, you've got to have these kids loading the spear gun themselves. Otherwise, they'll just you hand it over and it's just a willy nilly shot. You know, and if they get something, they get something. If they don't, they don't. But um, when they have to load everything themselves and set up everything themselves, um, then they make the shot count, you know. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, nice. 
were you loading the spear guns for them at the at the start? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was. Um, just sort of helping. But the one of the other things we found was one of the spear guns, I think it might, I'm not sure which one it was. It might have been a, a wetty reef. It had a the central fin, you know, in the in the shaft, the third Yep, fin, the load uh, like a loading gun. tab. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they made a big difference. It just gives them a second bite at pulling a rubber back, mm-hmm. especially, you know, the bigger rubbers. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. So do you guys, do you, do you hip load um, the first and then and then move it to your chest or how, how do you load? What's your loading technique like now? Um, yeah, I just, we, on our wetsuits, we've got a wee padded bit at oh, our nice. chest and just press it against and then load it. Mm-hmm. You guys are using wetty suits, eh? They they make good suits for 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 young men your size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're really warm and quality, quality suits. Yeah, they're not falling apart. Um, Max started off with a uh, a plush lined one, and Ben went straight to the uh, open cell, um, and the plush lined one fits Max really really well, but he's got exactly the same size as what Ben has and there's a big there's a difference in size now but you're finding a warmer aren't you yeah yeah and they both wear um uh two mil vests open cell vests under under the suits mm, cool and how long um so the water's pretty cold down where you guys are they um yeah. what's the, what's the water temp is it too cold to dive at the moment um well it's uh, no no I don't think so. These, the the coldest we've been in was last year. That was really cold, and that was uh, I think it was about seven degrees. Hmm. Um, Sheepers, tougher than I am. Yeah. Okay. So didn't, uh, just around uh, what, what part got cold the most in that that temperature? Um, my face. Yeah. 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 Face and hands, your extremities are the things that seem to get cold fast when you're in that temp, like your hand, yeah. your fingers and toes. Yeah, it's sort of. Uh, we had a big. I had a big wake up call with um, Max. I got him because he had smaller fins. I had to get some small booties or thin booties to so he could get his foot on them. And uh, complaining about the cold, and I sort of thought, oh, okay. And I actually swapped with him. And I said, oh, I'll take your booties. And I managed to squeeze into them. And he put my five mil ones on. And uh, we went and went for a dive. And half half an hour later, I seriously just couldn't feel anything from the knees down. No. I was like, <laughs> ragged. <laughs> feet ragged. were white. And I thought, you poor wee sod. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. They got better circulation than us at that age, though. So that would be yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> nah, all good. But, uh, yeah. No, we we do some good good kid sizes right through the right through from little tiny tops, you know, mm, mm, open mm. cell stuff. So. Yeah, it's awesome. He's got he's um he's done that, and it really helps the younger generation because access to gear is a big thing, you know. Like um, I remember chatting with Darren years ago, and he was talking about some of the gear he started with, and it's nothing like that now. Like if you're diving in really cold water, it's really nice to be warm. It's a, it's super important if you want to be relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think especially with the kids, you know, you've you've got to keep them comfortable and uh, and you know, warmth is comfort. And, mm. You mm. know, so. where to from here, boys? You, uh, what's your aspirations? You guys want to start diving in more comps? Uh, yeah, like mm, around South Island. Yeah, cool. Yeah, do some more comps and stuff. What about fish? What's on your hit list? What are the next species you guys are going to target? Kingfish. I yeah. want to try and get a, um, either a trevally or a um, trumpeter. Nice, nice. Good eating fish too. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, Ben's always been uh, targeted that kingfish uh, after our trip to Auckland. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you get, you get teased up there. There's plenty around up there, eh? Yeah, well, I'd sort of, he'd, he'd shot a wee, um, wee fish and uh, I was running it back to the boat. You know, it was only a, a sort of ten meters away, and um, left him uh, with sort of uh, armless. And <laughs> <laughs> there was a kingfish that took a real interest in him. It oh was just, no! Yeah, it was right below me, and it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> 
Was it as big as you? Yeah, uh, probably bigger. <laughs> Gee, was that would have been exciting. He uh, he would have had a crack at it too, but um, yeah. So I've, uh, yeah, he'll have to you have to get we'll have to get him one at some stage because uh, yeah, I still feel bad about that that one. It's funny, like I think sometimes with um, the real special species that you want to take, it's it, it, they're marked by having a few missed opportunities first, you know. And then it just seems to fuel you, and, and you get hungrier and hungrier to shoot one of those one of those species. And um, uh, you know, New Zealand and Australia, I think every country's the same with spearfishing. You, you you start to see a species before you you know get an opportunity to spear one, but uh, it, it um, builds the desire. I think so. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, because it's interesting. You've shot a couple of different species now. You, what was the one that you got on? A different one that you got at the lighthouse that day. What was that? Oh, leather jacket. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. That good eating too. Yeah, yeah. I was quite surprised actually. They're uh, yeah, they're, they're quite, but they're quite nice. Real, quite a creamy sort of flavour. I remember catching them off Taranaki, and um, you didn't even have to fillet them. You could just grab the sort of the head by the spike. And you could just twist twist the front of the fish off, and then it just left the fillet in the tail. And, yeah, um, yeah. Is, is that kind of what you guys do there? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it yeah. just sort of comes peels away, and then yeah, you're away. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit creamy that flesh from memory. I loved it. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's nice. Yeah, bloody good. Yeah. All right, awesome boys. Um, what about for other young young fellas uh, and young ladies that are wanting to start spearing? What advice would you guys give them? Um. Uh, get a good wetsuit. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Get a good spear gun that that you that you can load. Yeah. Mm -mm. The spear gun one's a bit of a tricky one, really. You know, this it's uh, you know when you tell a mum that you're gonna give them a spear gun to uh, go and shoot fish and stuff like that, but um, you know. It's just the same as, as like a firearm. I mean, these guys do a lot of hunting and stuff generally. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be as safe as any other sport with it. You know, it's just following the rules and being careful. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what – what um, has there been any crossovers from hunting to spearfishing for you guys? You know, like hunting-wise and stuff, is it similar on the in the sea to land? What do you think? Um, it's, terrain and stuff like that. It's well, yeah, it's pretty similar. You've got something that could potentially or potentially harm you if you're not careful, mm. and we are hunting for an animal to get some dinner. And um, well, I'd say that hunting's probably harder in you know endurance. Than spearfishing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but, to, you know, using uh, using sort of structure and, and terrain and stuff to hide and sneak around stuff and things like that, it's very, very similar. You know, as Ben said, when he sort of, you know, went down and lying on the sand and waiting for something and things like that, yeah, it's, 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 it's actually quite similar. Yeah, I, I think I think with with you know with land and the ocean, you have to learn about the conditions and the and the prey you're sort of following, and there's yeah, there's and the mark, marksmanship's a little bit different, but learning how to approach and I mean a lot of the times in the ocean we're trying to arouse their curiosity, on land uh, that works with some species but not a lot. Um, yeah. so, sometimes it's more about stealth than um, than yeah. calling yeah. them in. So yeah. Nah, cool, cool. Um, one of the one of the questions from the community. This guy says, um, uh, Jason. He says his boy's about to turn ten. Um, how do you get them to be confident in deeper water? So I think you you started um, sort of answering that, but I'll put the question out again to all of you guys. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's just a, a very gradual and slow acclimatization, really. Mm. Um, you know. I think when Max started, he was sort of basically lying on a rock looking into a, a really large rock pool with a pole spear. Uh, then he gradually sort of started following us around and just to, swimming around in places that yeah, they can stand up and then gradually moving out, you know, 
the next day take them out a bit further and, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, they it doesn't take long. I mean, do you notice the deep water now? No, not not really. Like I notice it, but I'm not really affected by it. Yeah, cool. But yeah, as I said before, you know, with uh, you know, follow by example, you know, just sort of swim out with them and swim back and and and. You know, a, a lot of times I spent sort of holding on to them and saying, are you okay? And um, and having to, as I say have, in the article, having to decipher Snorkelian, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, someone said to me, what's Snorkelian? I said, it's when, in, it's when someone tries to talk to you through their snorkel. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing now is uh, – the opposite's happened with these two. Normally I would be right with them and, and stuff like that and asking them more if they're okay and stuff like that. Now um, they're wanting space, if that makes sense. Like, you know, there's been a couple of times where I think Max was lining up a, a really nice butterfish and, um, you know, I was so eager in there to say, oh, they, you know, get him into it that you sort of give them a nudge and it puts a shot off or a, or get a bit of a swell that sort of you bang into them and stuff like that. And Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think we had, myself and Ben had a few words in uh, in the water because uh, I wouldn't back off it. So, but it's it's good. It's good. Now you yeah. sort of, you know, back off and, and let, you know, the way they go. Simple, accurate, deadly. Use the code NOOB, N-O-O-B, and save $30 on any spear gun for a limited time only. Go to killshotspearguns.com, check them out for yourself. Handmade in the Florida Keys by Ed Martin. Use the code NOOB, N-O-O-B, or head into the shop and say, Crikey, mate. And apparently Ed will hook you up with a $30 discount on any timber spear gun. Get your hands on one, killshotspearguns.com. The Noob Spirit Podcast, great content, fantastic guests. And uh, to go with that, we've got some free online courses by Ted Hardy at Immersion Freediving. Head over to noobspirit.com forward slash Ted and learn to take a bigger breath hold. Learn how to use your full chest to take down more fuel so that you can stay on the bottom for longer. Check it out, noobspirit.com forward slash Ted. Is it bloody more exciting watching your boys shoot than it is shooting yourself, Don? Yeah, yeah, it was the same with the hunting, really. Um, you know, I've just become a gun bearer, really. Um, <laughs> but, um, but then again, it's, uh, yeah, once once you've got that, uh, that, that itch, it's, you know, we'll go down and do a couple of drops myself and, and stuff like that. But once you, uh, like, seeing the boys shoot their first fish and stuff like that, um, yeah, that's pretty tremendous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom, Tom says um, he dives with lots of kids. How do you get them to slow down? Um, and, you know, because you're excited and you're seeing stuff, how do you sort of discipline yourself to slow down? It's, it's, it's a bit of a hard one when, you, when you've got the kids there because they do roar around. And um, there's been a couple of times where I've sort of looked around and then I looked up and, you know, kids are, you know, a few, quite a few yards ahead. Um, but the... It's the same with the the fish. The the big hand in front of their mask is is a you know, and then just telling them to slow down. And the other thing is um, stop them finning mm. is another thing. You know, you get them to lie on the surface or lie in the water, and and not fin, mm. Mm. Um, and just sort of float there and stuff like that. Kids kids tend to sit upright in the water, I think, and and they're always you know paddling away where yeah. if you just say to them stop you know don't fin yeah yeah and they realize that they're safe and they're comfortable and they can sort of start looking around but mm. yeah but what do you guys think you how do you slow down um well when i'm spear fishing i'm slow moving through the water because i'm looking for fish and i don't want to spook anything or i'm just looking at something itself but there has been times when I've wanted just to go off and have a look at everything real fast or if I'm cold I want to move faster Mm. but yeah sometimes what helps me to calm down and stop going fast is just to put my head above water yep 
and just have a look around and see where I'm going off to or next with Dad or. And how do you guys, uh, Ben and Max, you guys um, have turns at diving and Dad follows? I mean, how do you guys work your system for, for who dives next? Um, it's pretty much whoever says I'm going in first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus. That wouldn't work uh, for my yeah. buddies. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it turns out like, no, you're in first last time or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, a few heated discussions on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeepers, I couldn't do anything like that with my brothers and we were young. We'd tear each other to shreds. You fellas are doing well to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the, uh, I've got a question here from um, Garrett. He says um, he's got a four-year-old. Uh, he's keen as mustard, but how old do you think you need to be before you start sparing? Um. Well, I would say if they can use a life jacket and a mask and snorkel or in even fins, uh, you're, well, you're good yeah. to go. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's that breathing through the snorkel, if you can have your face in the water and be comfortable and know that you can breathe, mm. um, I, I, don't, yeah, I don't think there's much of a limit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Especially you don't, if they're keen. You don't really start spearfishing either straight away sometimes. I mean, if, if if they're not comfortable and confident, you can just get them to hang on to you and just go for a snorkel, have a look, a lot, have a look around. Yeah, well, that's what we did the first time. Mm. And um, um, when I hit a butterfish, it, that sort of changed that pretty quick. But um, there's, there's some days that we'll just, uh, you know, we, we won't spear a fish. Mm. You just. You know, sometimes you won't even take a spear gun. You just go and have a look and um, you see some interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, what about um, what about filleting, boys? Have you guys started filleting yet? Um, no. It's no. usually Dad that does it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a bit... It's, I'm, not, it's, I'm not that good at it. Oh, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm not that good at it, so I really don't want to put them into uh, bad habits. <laughs> oh, to. yep, yep. Yeah, there's a, there's a fair bit of finesse to filleting. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not the best at it either. I'm, I'm okay. I, I can, I can do a decent job, but uh, I'm a lot slower. Like you, you go out with some experienced deckhands or people that have worked in a, you know, in a fish shop before. Jeepers, they are the next level. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That might yeah, be a way to. Do, that, I wonder if you could do that actually. Go in and bloody, you know, get a get a. It's one thing I think spearfishing shops could do more of, you know, is um, you know, they go in, they've got twenty fish sitting there in an esky, and a whole bunch of people show up and and get an expert to sort of, you know, walk everyone through it. Everyone can grab a fish and have a crack at it. So, but yeah, uh, yeah. The last couple of days, I um, uh, when I was up with Darren, he uh, got me to film him doing a kingfish. Um, getting in there with a camera and, and he ran right through it and um, yeah it was uh, it was pretty impressive and s- stuff like that is you know mm. I'm, so I'm hoping you'll put that on the uh, on a YouTube or something at some stage but, yeah what about you um, what about the boys have you guys got favourite YouTube channels and stuff for sparing um, yeah. mostly Weetie Weetie TV um, and yeah, yeah. It's quite cool. a few, isn't it? Different ones. Yeah, I don't know much other ones. Oh, at um, Janine and Spiro. Oh yeah, those boys are good, eh? They get some awesome craze down there. Yeah, yeah. they uh, they get they do some really nice uh, videos, eh? Mm. Really nice, mm. really well produced. Yeah, yeah. Sa- Sam Wild's another one. If you get to watch some of his films, oh yeah, he's yep. bloody talented dude. And Luke Potts has got heaps of awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, cool. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge with Luke. He's he's got some, you know, the you learn a lot from watching his stuff. Yeah, he's good at teaching <laughs> stuff too. So it's it's bloody awesome. Um, I wanted to finish up, boys, just with some some funny stories. Um, besides having fights with each other and that out there, and maybe your dad spooking fish. What other sort of funny stuff happens out there? Um. Well. Well, we were looking around and this butterfish would be about 40, 50 centimetres came out of the kelp and 
I was pretty much like poking it, and then when I tried to pull the trigger, the safety was on, oh, and then it oh, swam no. off. <laughs> oh, no. Spewing. She was, a, she was a big butterfish. It was one of the biggest ones I've seen, and this thing came lumbering over this rock with a bit of kelp, and, uh, yeah, the safety was on, and, uh, yeah, there were some choice words said through that snorkel by the little fella. Yeah, it's in snorkeling, though, so only a few of us can understand it. That's good. <laughs> How do you guys like to eat your butterfish? Um, fresh out of the water. Mm. Yeah. Were well, you just fry it in some butter? Yeah. 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 Yum, yum. Oh, good. Well, it was a uh, bloody awesome to chat with you fellas. Um, I might have to um, touch base with you again if there's people um, wanting to ask questions. Is there anywhere guys can come and connect with you fellas and, um, and, and pest you for questions about going spearfishing? Oh, not not really. We sort of um, we haven't sort of organised too much at this stage. You might have um, to start a Facebook page, I reckon, or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, we I think we might have to do something like that because uh, we want to try and um, uh, answer a few questions, especially if there's a few new people that want to start out. You know, a dad and or mum or dad with a you know a week kid. You know, want to have a go and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. and, um, it'd be kind of good to try to hook up with other people with, with stuff like that. That's one of the things we found was was quite difficult. You know, I'm out with the the kids, and um, you know, you sort of think, crikey, especially as they're developing, you're thinking, oh yeah, you know, the, it's uh, we probably need a few more people into it. Yeah, a couple more people with, with kids same age or something as well. That might be cool. You can have friendly yeah, comps and yeah. stuff. and Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, awesome. All right. Well, um, today's episode um, will be, if people go to noobspero.com forward slash Spiro Kids, uh, I'll, I'll have this episode up there so people can come and check it out. I'll have a couple of photos up of you guys and uh, some of your proudest catches to date. But uh, bloody awesome to um, connect and I'll ha- – Oh, if anyone punches any questions in there, then I'll send them through to you guys. Yeah, no, flick them across. We're happy to, you know, even if there's some, you know, kids or anything like that have questions, want to ask the boys directly. Cool. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, you, men- you mentioned Weddy. I'll link them up in today's show notes as well. Uh, they've got some bloody good gear, especially for kids and stuff, and, uh, you know, robust, tough Kiwi equipment. That's what you want. And yeah. um, can't go wrong with that. No, no, it's all been... Uh, all been really, really good gear. Yeah, cool. Cool. All right, fellas. Well, um, enjoy the rest of your day. What are you up to this evening? You off, you off for a hunt tonight? Oh, no. I think we'll, we'll have a quiet one and then uh, we'll be into it tomorrow. Maybe. Go yeah. tea or something. Cool. I think I'll be able to get these, these boys be pretty keen to have a, get a butterfish for tomorrow night's tea, I think. So. Sweet, and um, and people people can come and connect with with you guys in uh, the Noob Spiro community on Facebook. I'll link that up as well because um, we got a bunch of uh, Spiro dads and and stuff in there. It's pretty funny um, connecting with everyone when I started this sort of the Spiro dad series. So yeah, yeah cool, all yeah. good. No, all that's right. good. We'll, we'll fire you some more uh, images and stuff like that through occasionally. And yeah. All good, boys. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. See okay, ya. Have a good holidays. Jeepers, what a what a bunch of characters, eh? These uh, Max and Ben, champion boys. Uh, loved hearing about their adventures, and uh, Don had a ton of good info there. I think for parents wanting to take their little boys or girls uh, out spearing, and um, it's a it's a confidence. Uh, builder for sure but um, obviously it doesn't happen overnight and uh, so it's cool to chat about this and like I said I want to chat about um, I want to do a few of these sort of chats again in the future as well if you love listening to the New Spirit Podcast I'd encourage you to become a patron listener head over to patreon.com forward slash noobspero and you can support the show on an episode by episode basis there's three levels there's $2, $5 or $10 every single dollar that goes into the New Spirit Patreon um, is used to fund trips where I get to come out and interview interview people go spearing with listeners just hang out in your part of the world and uh if you're interested in becoming a patron listener head over to patreon.com forward slash new but thanks for listening to the show today guys if uh you're here for the first time i hope
camp. I'll see you again in a fortnight. We're going to have another spearfishing character on, and uh, just stay stoked, and I hope you stay safe in your spirit. Shrek out. Are you listening into this podcast thinking about your neglected spear guns down in the shed? But if you're like me, go to neptonics.com, buy yourself some new rubber, some new rigging, get your spear gun tip top so that you're ready when that fishing trip comes around the corner, you get the random phone call, we've got to wear the window, the fish are running, let's get into it. Neptonics.com, to sweeten it up, use the code NOOB10 to save 10% off storewide at neptonics.com. Get those spear guns sorted, don't be like Shrek. This special episode of the Noob Sparrow Podcast is brought to you by spearfishing.com.au. Long-time partners of the Noob Sparrow Podcast, spearfishing.com.au, have a listener deal. Use the code Noob Sparrow to save $20 on every purchase over $200. Thanks for supporting the Noob Sparrow Podcast and shopping with spearfishing.com.au.